introduction, my friend. Okay. Everyone ready and happy? Uh, yeah. All good, Bill? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Got Till 5 podcast. My name is Max. His name is Jesse. And this week, we have a very special guest joining us. We got Bill Stevenson, musician extraordinaire, performing with such acts famously as Descendants, All, Black Flag, The Lemonheads, Only Crime, just to name a few. He also owns and operates the Blasting Room Recording Studios with Jason Livermore, which has produced some of the greatest albums of the last 26 years. So, Bill, welcome to the show, and thanks for coming on today. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. This is, this is such a highlight, Bill, honestly. Thanks so much for doing this. It's brilliant we are um fanboys i will admit to you oh okay I, oh yeah well i i have uh, bands that i'm fanboy of so i get that yeah. <laughs> excellent how you been uh, holding up with uh, the past year and stuff i you know i feel bad for people who are having a tough go of it with with you know with covid uh and i feel like you know, people should hear their stories. To be real honest, like for me on a personal level, aside from there not being any concerts to play mm -hmm. and, you know, the huge impact financially that, that that has on me, other than that, I don't, my life isn't any different because I'm a guy like, I don't, go to bars. I don't go to restaurants and I'm not, I'm not an anti-social person. I'm just not very social. You know, I don't, I don't hang out much. And yeah. so I, I'm just doing what I do. I have my, my little personal studio in my basement here and I have all my, um, my stuff I need down here to exercise. This is a real simple couple, simple dumbbells and a, a yoga ball and an exercise bike and, couple of resistance bands and you know i have my office here and i have you know a house a fridge full of food and and i i don't really need anything else ever or want anything else ever so my life is just how it always is yeah um, but I'm i missing. feel bad for people who are you know out of a job and stuff i mean i yeah. feel like if if let's say if it's a year from now and there's still no shows okay i'm gonna be broke I'll be looking to sell my house and stuff. But for now, I, I'm okay. You know, I had enough extra saved that I could just kind of coast. And yeah. But I feel bad for people that are, like, losing their house and they have to, you know, really, really suffer to survive. I feel bad for them. For sure, sure. We we really hope that everyone kind of, kind of you know, it, it kicks off for everyone. Interesting question to both of you. Do you remember your last gig? Because obviously we're all missing gigs. What, what, Bill? What was your last gig? What yeah, it was. It was uh, November. You know, two Novembers ago. Um, the Blasting Room. It was such a great fun. The Blasting Room had its twenty fifth anniversary show. Oh wow! And a uh, big fun, big celebration. And we have a, had an open house where people could come in and we give them a tour of the studio. Nice. But that the the show was great. It was you know eight eight of our eight of the bands that we've recorded at the Blast Scene Room: uh, Rising Ends, Descendants, All Hagfish, uh, Audio Karate. Uh, you, you know, so it was like a whole a whole bunch of cool bands, and it was so much fun. Uh, boy, I, oh man, I'm still. If I think back to that show, the energy in that room. All the people, the audience, they were so, they were so, so happy. And then just, you know, three months later, everything was shut down. It's crazy. That, that blaster roof, that almost sounds like a fantasy gig you put together in your head, doesn't it? It really was. It, it, it really was. And like, it was my son, my son's favorite band is Audio Karate. And he oh, finally cool. got to see them play. And he got, finally got to see a Wilhelm Scream play, which is also one of his favorite bands. Nice. Oh, so amazing. I told him he has a Wilhelm Scream ball cap and a Dinosaur Jr. t-shirt. And I pretty much said, if you just wear those two things, you'll fend off any people that you don't want to talk to. They just, <laughs> they'll stay away from you. And people that you might want to meet or whatever, they'll come up to you. Yeah, yeah. totally. That's some good fatherly advice. I like yeah. that. Yeah. 
<laughs> put stuff out <laughs> that you want to do exactly yeah you know speaking of uh blaster rooms I'm, i presume everything's kind of pot and hold at the moment do do you no have way. any kind of no is it way. still kicking yeah you know that <laughs> studio has been booked solidly completely solidly for 26 years since Amazing. we built it but we were booked full before we even had paint on the walls we already had bands calling to come record we weren't even open to the public. It was just for all and descendants. But bands started calling and they wanted to record, and it it has not stopped for twenty six years. It's 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 unbelievable to me. That's incredible, and I guess for someone like you with like the work ethic that you've got, that's sort of you know been covered in filmage and things like that. That's that's amazing, right? That's um, what you want. You just want to keep going and going and going. You know, I like to think that at age 57, I've kind of backed off of that a little bit. I don't, I don't just want to work all day, every day. You know, I'd like to, I like to have some times when I don't work too. Uh, this year during COVID, one of the best things is I, I resumed my interest in uh, backpacking and camping. Oh, cool! And so my son and I went on a couple trips. You know, hike because here we got the mountains here in Colorado. You know, hiking up the mountain and camping up on the mountain and fishing and we went fishing a lot of times. We played, we played, we threw the ball around the basketball, the baseball, the football. And um, yeah, we spent time up on the, up on the river that's close here. Uh, but the studio, you know, there's five of us at the studio. There's, there's five of us. There's four engineers plus Jonathan, who, who is our sort of technician. Mm. And, um, and we have four studios now, you know, not just one or two in the last three years, we, wow. we, we built it out. So we have four studios. So it's always, always going crazy up there. Even if I myself am not up there, you know, yeah. the yeah. days of me, like being the first one to arrive and then the last one to go home. I'm, I'm not really trying to be that guy anymore. I worked, spent so much time working so hard all those years we did like, 152 shows a year, 100 shows a year. That's like, that's a lot. I feel like I've lived three people's lifetimes already, so I don't mind taking it a little easy. You you got to enjoy the fruits of your labor and uh, enjoy what you've kind of got. And I think, as you say, you got the mountains. You enjoy time with your son. Perfect time to do it during lockdown. Yeah, and sometimes I record my daughter singing. She'll she'll pick some song she likes, and we'll find an instrumental version of it, or we'll make an instrumental version. And, and I'll record her singing over it. That's fun. And then her, my daughter and my son, they did one together because they both know enough about engineering. They know how to record each other. Oh, so they okay. recorded each other singing a, a pop song. What was the name of that pop song? I'm going to get stuck between your teeth like cotton candy. That song. You know oh, that yeah, song? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard, yeah. I've heard, I've heard about. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that song. I want to get stuck between your teeth like cotton candy. Yeah, they they sung that one, you know, because I don't listen to pop music, but they, my daughter's really into pop music. So she's like, Miles, come on, sing this with me as a duet. And they did that. <laughs> and then around Christmas, we did our Ramon song. We all, all four of us, my wife and I and, my, and Maddie and Miles, and we did that song, uh, Merry Christmas, I Don't Want to Fight Tonight. Oh, we all sung, everybody sung different little parts and stuff. That's and really cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I want to have a fun life. I want to. I want to have a fun life and enjoy myself. Yeah, and and I think it's yeah, striking that balance is is so important. And I'm so happy to hear that the blasting rooms are still still booked up. Is there? Yeah, those guys kind of do so well. Andrew, Andrew Berlin, and Chris Beeble, and then my co-owner Jason Livermore. They just they just crush it. Yeah, need a good team behind you. Is, is there anything kind of coming out that you're excited about or anything kind of in the works? Well, you know, last year we finished up a uh, Rise Against album, which oh. that'll be coming out in, I think, June. So that's cool. You I mean, in terms of stuff we produced, and then that, that No Effects album, I know that just came out uh, a couple yeah. weeks ago. That's, yeah, that, that's something we did that two Februarys ago, but if it took them a long time to finish it up and they kept making us adjust the mixes and stuff. So, but it's out, it's out now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, that Linuleum single is fantastic. It's one of their best singles in years, I think. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I think it's great. Yeah, really enjoyed that. Mm. Um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't obviously talk about uh, New Descendant stuff. Uh, a lot of our listeners are kind of clamoring to hear. You released uh, two fantastic songs last year. They were very political in, in the tone of the songs. Is that the general tone of the album? Can you tell us anything about the new album at all? No, we, when we released those single songs, it, those were more like to sort of document points in time. Mm -hmm. Those those are lyrics. Those lyrics are coming from Milo, so I feel like he could speak to it a bit more profoundly and accurately. But those were more just to mark certain points in time. And fortunately, we're not in those times anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, fortunately. Uh, so... No, our, our new our new album, it's the stuff we're working on, it's not, you know, it's not like that. It's not, you know, like, oh, they're they turned into some kind of political band. No, no. <laughs> Those are just certain songs that, you know, we felt like we needed to kind of speak to certain things a little bit. Yeah, yeah, which is what you guys have done in the past. But yeah, it's not like we yeah, we're still normal descendants that you know people know. And yeah. we have so here's where we're at. We're working on a new, new record, right? But we finally finished our old, old new record, which is that'll come out in June. And it's the um, it's it's the Frank and Tony lineup, the Milo Goes to College lineup. Oh wow! Um, it's what it is is it's all of our very, very first songs that I mean that that 15 of them that never got recorded. These were the first songs we ever played together, you know, like the first songs that we ever played together. But by the time we kind of learned how to play well enough, you know, we were little kids when we started. And by yeah. the time we learned how to play well enough, we had kind of gotten sick of them and we moved past them. Oh, those songs suck. Now we got cool, better ones. So by the time we actually started recording, you know, several years later, we had kind of left those songs behind. Right. So I'm talking 78, 79. 80. Wow. But so in 2002, Frank and Tony and Milo and I, we got Frank and we got together and we recorded all those original old our it's like our, it's like our first first album that never got recorded. And so yeah, we recorded awesome. those all in 2002 and then we kind of sat on them for a long time and thinking, well, when's a good time to release them? And then then we finally, then you know, then a while, while, while later, Milo did the vocals on him because in 2002, Milo was just focused focused on his science work. So yeah. now it's all finished and it's all ready and it's going to come out in June. Incredible! It's gonna be cool. It's going to be fun and working on it all and mixing it and everything. It just brought back so many fun memories of of you know the three of us and then you know Milo joined a little bit later. But mm -hmm. uh, there's those first. Those first times we played in the in the garage there, in Frank's sister's garage, um, it, and it's so it's just yeah that Frank's sister's garage was was in Long Beach, and the name of the record is Ninth and Walnut, which is those are the cross streets where Frank's sister's garage was, where we first practiced, where we first played these songs together. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, I, it's really, I can't wait. really it would make me it made me so sentimental working on it. And then, you know, and then when I was finishing the mixes and sending them to Tony, and he's like, Oh, it's making me so sentimental because you know, Frank <laughs> passed away several yeah, years ago. We, so it's yeah. a good thing we recorded because they're mostly they're a lot of them are his songs, you know, some Tony songs, none of mine, none of mine and oh, none really? of Milo's, because this was before we knew how to write songs. Right. You know, okay. You know, I learned how to write songs by listening to Frank and Tony. Right. And I so, love. I love the. Uh, I hope this comes across correctly, but I love the hatred in Frank's songs. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. The bitter, the bitter resentment. Yes. <laughs> yes it's no, incredible. it's full of it. It's full of it. <laughs> yeah. It's probably oh, you know, now in this PC day and age, some of them might make people a little mad, but it no, they're all there. Oh, great. He wrote, ones he wrote when he was like 14, 15. He wrote some of them in 75, 76 even, I think. Wow. Oh, man, I can't wait to hear that. That's it's so going to be cool. It's coming out on Epitaph. I guess they haven't announced it yet. So if you could not, like, announce it or something, just if somebody hears this, okay, fine. But don't, like, 
Don't yeah. shout it from the rooftops. Pull yeah. the thing off because I might get in, somebody might get mad at me or something. Cool, man. No, no worries. We'll keep it secret quiet. safe with us, Bill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was um? What was the reason for kind of waiting until now to release it? Was it just good timing? I don't or? really no. I don't have a good reason of why it took us so long. We, I think we were waiting for like some right time. And then I thought, well, now's the right time. Okay, that lineup can't tour because Frank's dead. So let's put it out now while while the while the you know the main lineup now can't play any shows. Let's put it out now. Yeah, awesome. Plus, I've been dragging my feet on finishing my songs, so it's like, yeah, let's put it out. It'll give me more time to finish my songs. <laughs> How, how are they going? These were our very first song. I still remember like that first time because I had never played with a human being before. Right. Before Frank and Tony. And I remember just sitting there and it was Frank's brother's drum set. And I was like, oh, and I still remember the first song we learned. Awesome. So crazy. What, what was it? It was uh, Crepe Suzette. Nice. Oh, cool. So before you played with Frank and Tony, you were playing along to your favorite records? Yeah. Um, is that how you learned? Yeah. Smith, the Ted Nugent, Rolling Stones. I tried to play along with Black Sabbath, but you know, Bill Ward, he has such a special way that he plays. It's You can't really play along with Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is special. Yeah, totally. There's no band like, like them. Well, you know, at the risk of making you feel uncomfortable again, that's how I'm a drummer and that's how I feel about you in many ways. And um, when I was well, starting... I agree. You can't play along with me either because my timing no. is weird. <laughs> I don't know about that. But I've always, because I love your music so much, I've always stayed away from learning it because I'm scared if I learn it, the magic might go. Does that make sense to you? It won't go because it's not what I'm playing. It's the weird ass off time feel that I have. <laughs> I never Maybe. played with a metronome when I was a kid. So my my tempos go up and down all the time, constantly. And it's, it's kind it of, works though. It's kind of funny that I'm not even qualified to be a drummer. I thought the drummer's number one job is to keep time, but I kind of <laughs> do it more like a little more like surfing up and down a little like, woo, 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 you know, that's cool though. I, yeah, I love your style and the stamina that you must have to keep it up. Like, do you have I'm like trying. warm up and exercise routines? Son. I'm I'm trying. I'm trying to keep strong. During COVID, I've been exercising every morning and eating my broccoli and and I'm trying. I'm trying to stay strong. Yeah, I we'll see. I mean, I hope I can still. When when you hear a live tape of us recently, like I'm still strong. I mean, I'm arguably maybe playing a little bit tighter than I used to a little more accurately. But I mean, at some point that's, it's going to change, you know, there's, that's, there's not, there's not 70 year old people shredding. There just aren't, you know, at some point it's going to come and then I'll, I'll bow out gracefully when I can't do it anymore. Oh, uh, well, that won't be for a while. I hope. Um, the, uh, we, <laughs> uh, the I, last I love it. You know, I love playing so much. Oh man, you can you can tell just by watching you. Uh, the the last time me and Max saw you live was um, I think it was August 2019 at the Shepherd's Bush in London. Yeah, um, if you remember that yeah. gig, that was yeah. insane. That was such a great show. Yeah, that was because um, CJ Ramon was support on that one, if I remember That's correctly. Right. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of one of his yeah. last shows, wasn't it? Or yeah, his last yeah, show. I that. And my buddy Mitch was there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. That was great. And you actually, um, I don't know if you'll remember this, you uh, you got on the mic um, towards the end of the show and sort of thanked us all. And um, I've, I've well, never seen you really do that so, before. It's so amazing. Now, who would have thought I could be 57 years old and people still want to come hear, you know, my stupid songs and everything. I, I, I'm very, I'm very grateful. I don't, I don't take any of it for granted. There's, I think a lot of people that get in bands and they get famous, they sort of, take all of that for granted and everything. I don't take it for granted. I'm very, very appreciative. That's great. That's great to hear. And it's so nice to see how how clearly you all still get on with each other as well. There's a oh, lot yeah, of love happening fun. on that stage. Yeah, we have great fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, one question, while we're on the subject of new music and stuff, when we told um, people that we were going to be interviewing you, a lot of people asked us to ask you this. So I have to ask you, um, 
there was talk a few years ago of um, an instrumental all record that was in the works. Is well, that, that wasn't still a few years ago? Though that was like twenty years ago. Oh, really? Well, right. that's but these well, fans have good memories. We recorded some stuff, and um, I, what what we had wanted to do was to do something that had a lot of improvised elements. Uh, so, like, really being influenced by, say, Charlie Parker or Ornette Coleman. Um, but the stuff we recorded, I, I, none of us were quite happy with it enough to, to release it. It's like we, I think the fact that we tried to do it and that all the experimenting and all the labor we put into it, I think that was the reward from it. Okay, cool. The result, I don't, none of us were quite really happy with it. So we kind of just said, well, let's, let's maybe work on this more. But then a bunch of things happened that kind of stopped us. You know, my, my, my father, uh, 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 I had to take care of my father and, right. and then he died. And, and, and then, uh, then we, a couple of us had kids and then also, then I had a brain tumor. So that yeah. kind of like, that that track we were on it kind of it kind of we never finished that thought cool well as long you know it's uh, and then obviously descendants kicks up again and um it's been more full time recently than it ever has been isn't it which i bet is something you never saw come in in your 50s yeah we play you know we play just enough shows to for it to be um a way a way to support ourselves but not enough shows to where we get sick of it. Yeah, mm. that's perfect. Most bands break up because they get sick of being around each other. And I, yeah. I think we've done a pretty good job of not letting that happen. Awesome. Um, I, uh, you brought up your um, brain tumor there. And obviously, I think mo mo most people became aware of how serious that was through Filmage, the documentary. Um which I think is one of the best um, sort of band documentaries I've ever seen. Uh, were you happy with the finished product of the film? Yeah, I really was. Uh, when people said they wanted to make a movie about us, I, I was like, okay, great, but I'm not, I'm not going to be involved in it or whatever. I'm not making any kind of decisions or anything. You just do your thing and, and show me when it's done. And that's what they did. None of us, none of us were involved in it, you know, with, getting into it with them. Those Deedle and Matt, they did a great, great job with it. I'm really, really happy with what they did. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. And I think um, if anyone's listening who hasn't seen it, um, it's on Amazon Prime at the moment. So um, if oh, anyone it? has that, it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, so yeah, it's on Prime right now. Oh, cool, 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 mm. cool. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if I could wave a magic wand, I guess maybe I would have, not wanted it to be so much kind of about me and my health and stuff, but I understand they kind of used that as a way to have a, like a dramatic plot run through a documentary. So yeah. I, it was I, kind I think, of a story. I think it's probably for the best, but since I'm camera shy, it, it was like, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it, Mike. Sorry, Max, go on. No, go on, mate, go on. Um, so um, if you say your camera shine, you're happy at the back, um, drumming away and everything. Um, yes. But you're, but you're a good, you know, you've proved on occasion that you're a very good guitarist as well. Um, you've talked about singing earlier as well. Has the idea of a solo album or anything like that ever been something that you've thought about? Oh, I've never thought about it enough to to start heading in that direction. I mean, it would be sort of an obvious thing to do because I play, you know, I play all the instruments that would be required. I play bass, guitar, drums. I'm fine. I'm fine singing. When I when I show the band my songs, it's a demo of me playing everything. Right. It's like, here's the song. Uh, but I just, uh, I don't I don't know. Maybe when I'm older or something, I, I don't really have any, I don't have any interest in doing that right now. Yeah, we'll leave that to Stefan. Leave, leave him to kind of take yeah, care Ste of that. Stefan did a great solo album. Yeah, well, maybe the way he approached it where it's partly a solo album and partly an album of cameos, you know, maybe that would be fun or something. But but uh, I don't know. For my, I like having my band, like between 
between Milo and Chad and Scott and whatever, I there's always somebody there to sing my song. It's, it's fun. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Do you think, uh, I don't know, obviously, how far for you guys are on, on the process of the New Descendants album, but is, is anyone's songs coming out more prevalently, or is it, it kind of a mixed well, bag? Well, I'll tell you, moment? Stefan and Milo have a million songs done already, and we've already recorded them. But no, me, awesome. and Carl, me and Carl are lagging, um, and we have to get ours more finished. Yeah. Mm. Do we think it will be similar so like, length? To we're like three-fifths of the album is completely recorded, wow. and then I'm... I'm ruining the progress, but, it's okay. <laughs> that, but that's okay. Maybe that's why the Frank and Tony album is there to save me. To, exactly. To, to buy me time. To buy me time. <laughs> Do you think um, I was listening to um, an interview with you actually um, earlier today in preparation for this, and you were talking about how happy you are, which is amazing, and that you you're sort of happier than you have been in a long time, um, and that's awesome news. But do you think that that's actually hindering? your songwriting a bit because you need people to be slightly like, people do not like my songs when they're happy right the times when i've written songs that were kind of happy nobody liked them people want me to be going through like the worst horrible breakup in the world and yeah. that and that and that and that just isn't that isn't happening right now yeah right but yeah yeah I, it yeah i don't want to feel crappy i don't want to feel crappy just so i can write good songs no. Yeah, no. I have some things that I'm writing about that are interesting. I just, with me, I just, I get the songs finished, but then I fuss over the, the trimming. Like I bake the cake, and then I fuss over the decorative icing and the candles and stuff. I um, the intros, the way the intros sound, or the instrumental passages, or like the arrangement. How long should the bridge go? I fuss over minor details to just to ad nauseum that's yeah and that's the, good the though older i get to i'm becoming more one of those weird i'm becoming one of those weird like ocd fussy perfectionism type weirdos and it's really it really impedes progress but i mean but it makes the end result better right and i think that's everyone would agree you get, you get overexposed to things I mean, I you know I've been listening to Cole Porter now for almost twenty years, and and uh, just or just other songwriters that are just you 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 know Irving Berlin or whatever, or 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 even something somebody like Paul Westerberg or Steve Earle or or you know uh, Wilco or you know right. these mm. people that are just writing these incredible songs, and then if I finish one and I'm like, well. Does the world need this, or should they just listen to a Cole Porter song? You know, so it's like I really, I really, I've turned into this guy who's, who just judges himself. Very, I judge myself very harshly. That's interesting. That yeah, that's really interesting that you've ended up like that. But it's but always. Um, oh, where are we going? Oh, hello. <laughs> who's who's this? this? That's Lady. Lady. Yeah. Oh, she looks lovely. Oh, she's a good puppy. <laughs> just just the one dog? No, Slinky. Slinky's around here somewhere, but I don't see him. He'll, he'll, be, he'll come down. He'll come down. <laughs> oh, that's got, awesome. Got to have an appearance. Um, while we're on the subjects of, of albums, uh, Jesse, you, you raised a good point about expectations in, in songs. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was just sort of thinking about, um, do, you th do you think there's a difference between um, what fans want from a Descendants record and what you want from a Descendants record? Yeah, that's a nice question. That that bears some, some delving. <laughs> I mean, that uh, depends on the fan, right? But a lot of fans, if they could listen to an album that would make them feel the way they felt when they heard Milo goes to college, you know, they would be extremely happy. And, you know, the way we write songs now as people, middle-aged people, obviously we don't write songs that way. You know, we write songs the way that we write them now. I mean, yeah. what, the subject matter, but then on the other hand, well, wouldn't it be weird if I was writing a song about like some teenage crush wouldn't that be weird? Or, or, yeah. or it's like a song about how much I hate my dad. Would that be, that wouldn't be weird. You, you know, that, I mean, that would be totally weird. So we just, you know, we'd have to do what's, what's honest for us. 
But I will say that if they want the experience of feeling how they felt when they heard Milo goes to college, they will get that with Ninth and Walnut. They will. Awesome. They will. They will get it in in an unbelievable way. It's it's kind of like scary. <laughs> Oh, and you're getting me really excited, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> down, Jesse, down. A four months to wait. I know, yeah. I'll, just, I could... Yeah, Frank's lyrics is just full of full of hatred and bitter bitter resentment. Oh, great. But yeah. then on the flip side, you know, with Hypercafe of Spazinate, um, your most recent Descendants album, that did exactly what you were just saying. It was still Descendants music, but lyrically it was so clearly... Um, the lyrics were so clearly written by, you know, you at the age you're at. And it totally worked. It was awesome. Yeah, that's all we can really do is be honest. I feel good about Hyperspaz. I feel like Hyperspaz is our, it's maybe tied for second place for our mm. albums, I think. Well, that's I, interesting. That's, it's, it's hard for me to judge it, obviously, but like, I don't think it's in the, our bottom. I think it's in no, no, either too. middle or above middle, you know? Yeah, I yeah. totally agree. Which What's I it tying with out of interest? Older, they don't ever put out any good records. So I got, <laughs> you have, when you're older, you have to put out a record like 10 times as good for anybody to even pay attention to it or listen to it. Right. Just, oh, I like their old stuff. That's just, they're not list. They're not even giving it a fair listen. Yeah. Our music's so disposable nowadays with Spotify. And so people aren't investing yeah. in it like they used to. Yeah. When you buy a record and you'd spend 10 bucks on it or whatever, you'd, um, because you'd put that money down for it, you would give it yeah, a real music good go. Have any worth now. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of a shame. Um, but uh, what's Hypercab, Hyperspaz um, tying with out of interest for you as your second Descendants album? Um, well, everything sucks. Uh, and Milo goes to college and hyperspaz. I would say, I'd say those are the three best, but then I'd, I don't know how I'd rank them. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. It was, uh, like it was, those are the three best. Yeah. And it was nice to see so many songs on hyperspaz as well that were consistently good. Like there was a lot of tracks, but each one lent something to the album. Is, is that well, that's what's because cool about when you have four songwriters, <laughs> each guy can bring their best, you know, best three or four songs forward. And, um, you know, that usually works out well, man. I couldn't imagine being, being, Paul Westerberg and just, you know, he's written, he has written what nine albums worth of just incredible songs. Mm, yeah. so, I mean, I'm including his solo albums because I like his solo albums better than I like the replacements. Oh, cool. That's interesting. Or like Steve Earl, how do you write, you know, that many great songs or Duke Ellington or, or, uh, you know, or Cole Porter, or how do you write that many good songs? How? How? Yeah, it's insane. But I mean, I mean, you you said yourself, you know, some people just have the gift. I mean, you've talked about before how songs just appear fully formed in your head, or certainly the choruses, which is like, I know you obviously don't know what it's like not to have that ability, but that's insane. Yeah, if I didn't have that, I would never get any songs done because I'm not the guy that sits down and like strums a guitar and goes, oh, that sounds kind of cool. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. For me, I just have those woof, those things that come and it's like, whoa, hey, that's a song. It's all done. I can hear it all in my head. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Are you looking forward to um, obviously when all of this is kind of done? Any any tours lined up? Is it just going to be US, or are you looking to kind of branch out a little? Well, we'll, we'll play wherever they'll have us. I mean, we like we like going and playing places that either we we've never played or places that we haven't played you know very often. Like last mm. year, or well, two years ago now, we got to go to China. And that was cool. Oh, cool. And um, yeah, we were in China, you know, June, June before COVID. Yeah. So, right. I mean, you, I don't know if you could, you couldn't, I don't know when the next, cause plus China got a lot of weird stuff going on now too. Right. Politically and stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
I don't think we could go play China now, or maybe we could. I don't know. I, I quit watching the news because of when we had our bad president stuff and all that. I quit. I quit watching. Well, it was making well, me, I don't blame you. Making me too upset. Yeah. yeah. I get a, a, a if I hear just too much, too too much bad news every day. I get an ulcer. You know, I don't. I don't like it. No. It's not healthy. It's not healthy to consume that much bad news. No, all I can do is try to do the best I can. Yeah, I, yeah, totally. If I see someone that needs some help or someone in need, I maybe I'll try to help them. You know, I try to just do what right, what's right around me that I where I can help out. I feel like if everybody just kept it that simple, just try to be a good guy and try to help out if you see somebody in need. If every single human did that, I think we'd be okay. But we don't seem to do that. No. Yeah, totally. This it's the whole um, treat others how you'd like to be treated, isn't it? That's, you want um, others as you have them. Exactly that. Them. Yeah, yep. that's the golden rule. It really is. Yeah. Exactly. Keep that. Do you do any kind of like? Is it literally just I'll switch off the news and I'll go for a hike? Is that how you escape from everything, or do you have other methods where you kind of like focus on yourself a little bit? Uh, I mean, without having any kind of a, without using the word yoga or the word meditation, I do my stuff in the morning. I do my stretching, my stretching, my breathing, my exercising, uh, and my quiet, silent time where I just sit quietly. And uh, I, I, I do that most days. Yeah, I like it. That's awesome. It's so important we to do. We have an awful well. lot of noise, noise these days the social yeah. media and all that i try not to i don't really go on there very much i might check my facebook thing uh one, once a week or something something like that uh, just to see if you know like i found out one of my friends died or something by looking on there but mm. but i don't really yeah i don't like to waste time with all that it's pretty 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 bad for me for me i don't know if it's bad for you but for me it's bad yeah, you get in a horrible hole with it, and it, it, it's good to have that separation. And as you say, stretch, get There's out, so many, walk around. So many distractions that we all have. You can't. No excellence, no greatness, no profundity can occur with that many distractions. We we our lives now don't allow us any deep thought. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you're right. Do you think maybe going a bit deeper meta here, but but do you think maybe that constant distraction element is is affecting how music is being made today? What, what do you have any current views on on how music is now? Yeah, I mean you couldn't get you couldn't get a kid to sit still right now to like the Paranoid album or like that band Captain Beyond or let's say the second Jimi Hendrix Experience Acts as Bold as Love. You couldn't get a kid to sit through that, let alone. When my parents were young people, like Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, there's no way you could get someone to sit still for that. It's, it's too. It requires some investment. It requires yeah. some deep mental investment. Yeah. yeah, totally. Not only that, but things people like now, bands now they more write jingles, little yeah. kind of catchy things that after you hear them five times, you can't get them out of your head, but you want to kill yourself because <laughs> of it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, it has. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's affected music like that, and I think uh, as a result of that, scenes as well. I mean, like you know, um, the punk scene is something that we can all uh, relate to more than any other scene, I guess. And I don't think the punk scene, the way it was in those early days with you, with Black Flag and the Descendants and um, the Last and all that, I don't think a scene like that could organically happen today. I mean, I think very few things can organically happen today. Mm. But but I don't really know or care whether that could happen. I more want to know well what what's happening right now. Yeah. I, hear bands, new. I hear bands that I love. I mean, I I I mean they're not new bands, but I mean bands that I heard where I was like, wow, cool, you know, a Wilhelm Scream or uh, Audio Karate or, or Pro Propagandi or uh, the Menzingers or uh, uh, Biffy Clyro or, you know, I hear, I hear things that I really like. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, and then th that, so great music can still happen. I, I just think 
social media kind of kind of puts just a lot of clutter, lots of noise, lots of noise out there, and you kind of have to find your way through the noise. You got to wade through to kind of find those those bands because as you say they are out there um and i know we were talking but it's about easy because your friend can just text you and go dude check out this band and they'll send you a link and you can go oh wow yeah 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 it's yeah cool. exactly you know it, it's so i know we were talking about spotify earlier and how that can be difficult for ingesting music properly but it is also great for finding like i found a band yesterday in southern brazil which i would never have found out before but i listened to a whole album and i loved it so it does offer that opportunity to find new music easily like my, and make it more accessible. My water heater broke in my house. And yesterday the guy came to install the water heater and he saw that maybe a poster on the wall and he, and he told me to check this band out. They were called Devil Driver and they're metal. Like, yeah. I'm not a metalhead guy, but I, I like anything that's great. And I listened to it and I was like, wow, I really like this. And that's from the plumber. The plumber. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Spread the word. So, that's I mean, awesome. I think if you keep your ears open and you keep an open mind, there's plenty, there's always plenty of good new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think that's fair. Jesse, uh, Bill's obviously been very gracious with his time. Have you got any last questions before we grill him for a top five? Oh, man. Um, not really. Um, nothing I can think. Uh, one nerdy question I'd like to ask. Um, in the. Um, Intro to my age. Um, are you playing singles or doubles on your snare roll? Singles. Singles. Cool. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, I, I never learned how to do doubles. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah, so, you know, so yeah. Okay. Cool. Makes sense. Awesome. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Yeah. Now, mind <laughs> you, that's getting harder and harder for me the older I get. Oh, really? But for now, I can still manage it. Yeah. 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 Because mm. on the record, it's really just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's getting harder. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's been driving Jesse mental for like 30 <laughs> for years. years so yeah. Thank you for answering that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. As, as we as we said, um, at the end of every show with every guest, we always like to spring a top five on them. So I thought it'd be nice to maybe ask albums, but I'm, I'm going to be a bit mean and say, what are your top five Descendant songs? If you had to pick five, the rest go away. Oh, what five? Songs. Oh. Yeah. You have to save what? them from a fire. Yep. These are the only five that will remain. We'll give you time. Okay, Wiener Schnitzel and I want to be a bear. Nice, nice. We're up to 45 seconds of music. <laughs> I think we stumped him. <laughs> it's like it's like choosing between your kids, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh Never going to speak to us again after this. <laughs> the logistics. Mm. Oh, cool. That's a great choice. Get the time. Yeah. One of the Excellent yeah, great. Happy amazing. Stuff. Yeah. The hard one now. Spineless and scarlet red. Oh, oh perfect. Nice. nice. Okay. Yeah, that's a any great any particular reason for those? Was it drumming or just the way they, they felt? I'm just going by things that sort of like things that only we could really do. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's a million bands doing things that kind of sound like silly girl now or whatever you know like every yeah. band and their brother sounds like that now kind of you know yeah but but those ones i mentioned especially wiener schnitzel you know we we kind of you know we were that's where we were unique 
we kind of invented a way of playing uh, and you know with the teeny little songs and i want to be a bear kind of too it's 30 34 seconds long of just frank spewing his bitter resentment <laughs> and it's kind of like that's kind of what we did the best that's what we did best yeah totally yeah so that's and then with the other ones i mentioned those are just more like to me you know get the time is it's just a beautifully written pop song really yeah. spineless is more like um i just the li the lyric subject matter is it's you know it's that's my favorite lyric that i've written awesome so that's about it you know one song that i didn't um um and it was again listening to another interview and i didn't and all realize logistics, all logistics too just because that's that's uniquely ours you know nobody ever had a song like that yeah no nope. yeah no no one sounds like that yeah um, one song um, that you talked about um, in another interview was um, Smile that Milo wrote about oh, you, yeah. right? I should have chose Smile. I could chose Smile instead of, um, instead of um, I don't know, or could there could just be six, right? Yeah, it's totally. Yeah, 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 you're allowed, you're allowed a top six. Smile's a proper song, man. That's a beautiful. It's amazing, He's right? So, Milo is such a, Milo's the best, best friend that you could ever have. He's so, he's so um, kind to me. You know, he he could see that I was having like really bad trouble with a little bit of sadness and depression and stuff. He could see it before I did because right. he noticed I was drinking too much. Mm. And he wrote that song and he sent it to me, the demo. And I was like, well, dude, you know, th those are those are kind of harsh lyrics. And he's like, well, I'm just I'm just concerned about you. Yeah. And, it, I didn't really get it until a year later, and I went, "Oh, I see. Yeah, he could see. He could see me better than I could see me." Yeah, yeah, totally. That's awesome. I mean, I I loved that song when it came out, but it wasn't until recently I actually found out it was about you, and it's just made me maybe love it on a completely different level now. It's a great yeah, song. Yeah, Milo. God, he's put up with so much of my shit over the years. I can't believe. I can't believe he could see, still even stand me. He's the best best friend you could ever have. Oh, well, you're ob you're obviously worth it. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely, but it's good to see those kind of friendships and those bonds kind of last for for as long as they have. And Bill... well, I got great. I got the best people in the world. I got yeah. Lucky. I got lucky. If I had a bunch of assholes in the band, it wouldn't be like that. <laughs> it wouldn't be as fun, exactly. But, so. but it know, rubs I, off. You know, here's something that I'm really proud of. I instill good friends with every single person I have ever been in a band with. That's amazing. amazing. The That's only amazing. exception is Greg Ginn for Black Flag, but that was right. just because he, you know, he kind of, the way he handled us and treated all of us, that's different, you know. Yeah. But I mean, every single person in all, in Black Flag, in Descendants, in Only Crime, I, uh, I, I'm still really good friends with all of them you know we yeah. all we do all have like big group texts all together and stuff it's like <laughs> yeah that's awesome also, that's a testament also, to you as well yeah i was gonna say i think exactly. that's big volumes gotten, to you i've gotten closer closer with like with say with chuck and des and keith i've gotten closer now in my old age with them than yeah. i used to be and with scott too oh cool scott uh I, he and I, we maybe we fell out a little after he left the band, but Scott and I are very, very close. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Doug and everybody, well, Ray, Tony. Well, that's it. Relationships mature, don't they? And then you, you hold on to these kind of things, and it's nice to kind of, you guys have that in common. You have that relationship. So it's a beautiful thing to kind of sing. Yeah, man. It's Yeah, it's brilliant. And, and it keeps you happy. And a happy I bill is what we all want. I can't believe how lucky I've been. Think about it. I got to play with Keith, with Dezo, with Henry, with yeah. Chuck, with Greg, with Kira. I mean, with Robo. When I mean, he was in the band, but I was around. I could watch him. Yeah. And, and everybody, Dave, Smalley, and Scott, and Chad, and Doug, and Ray, Tony, Frank, Carl, yeah. Stefan. Um, and then it just, oh, man, it's, it's so, it, I feel really lucky it's, it's insane it, and they're the thousands of people that you've 
that you've made happy as an extension of that. You know, it's your great relationships that's made this amazing music that's made so many people, um, yeah, happy. Just it's changed their lives, man. As you said, free lifetimes. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> but Bill, all I can say is, uh, you know, thanks for coming on. We're going to say goodbye to the people. I want to have a quick chat with you afterwards. But um, thank you for coming on. We can't wait for the two new records. All of the, you know, Blasting Rooms doesn't need any luck, but it's going to kill for, for however long. And thank you for the music that you've put out for us. And we, we can't thank you enough and coming on and chatting with us. Well, it's been my pleasure. I hope I wasn't too rambling or boring and just listening to me Never. talk about myself for an hour. It seems like I could think of a better way you might want to spend your day. But I <laughs> nope, this is, this is exactly how we <laughs> wanted to spend our evening. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah this is great. Bill. Thanks so much, Bill. We really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone. for My pleasure. Thank you for your time and for having me. You're welcome. Anytime. And thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll be back next week with another episode. Make sure you subscribe and get uh, our merch at gottill5.tmail.com. Thank you once again for Bill for joining us. We'll be back soon. Goodbye and good night. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>